What I have here is an iPhone with a LiDAR sensor. And in the past, I've compared this LiDAR sensor to a high accuracy total station. But today I want to introduce to you Pix4D's Viadoc, an RTK GNSS antenna for your iPhone. The Viadoc has the ability to connect to your iPhone via Bluetooth. Once you've attached the Viadoc, you're able to use the iPhone's cellular network to connect through Intrep to your local Core's network. This essentially gives your iPhone the ability to correct its position in real time. We've never seen this in consumer cell phones until now. Now we've done plenty of experiments using the iPhone's LiDAR sensor to do mapping work, but can we increase the accuracy by introducing an RTK antenna that will adjust our position? Today I'm here at Ohio State University's campus testing out the Aviadoc in comparison to a surveying total station. A surveying total station is highly accepted as one of the most accurate and precise pieces of equipment in the mapping industry. Surveyors utilize this piece of equipment to find relative change in any type of measurements. And because I want to test out the accuracy of the iPhone 13 Pro with the Viadoc RTK antenna, I'm going to be comparing all the measurements that we get with that total station. All right, let's get started. This right here is the largest slope change on Ohio State's campus. It connects what is known as the North Oval and the South Oval, which both have a drastic change in elevation. And today we're going to be measuring the slope change using the iPhone 13 Pro's LiDAR sensor while it's attached to the Viadoc RTK GNSS antenna. Now we're going to be setting nine different points along the slope of the sidewalk. We'll set the backside at the top of the slope and using our rod, we'll be taking measurements at every single one of these points. Then we'll be scanning the sidewalk with the iPhone 13 Pro's LiDAR sensor with the Viadoc RTK antenna attached. thousand years later. Now I'm going to be setting one more point right here. This will be the location at which our total station sits. All right, now we've set all of our control points. Now the reason I'm scanning this sloped sidewalk is because I want to put the Viadoc RTK to the test. I want to see how well it'll pick up on that change using the iPhone LiDAR sensor and its RTK corrections. Now to keep everything on the same coordinate system, I'm going to be utilizing a GNSS receiver and taking a static observation on the top of the hill where our back site will be and at the bottom where our total station is. These points are going to be observed in NAD 83 Ohio South Zone. By having the same coordinate system, we can then measure the absolute accuracy of the iPhone with the Viadoc. First thing we're gonna do is set up the back site here at the top of the sidewalk. Next, I'm gonna set up the surveying total station. Now I do need the height of this total station, so I'm gonna use this tape to find it. All right, and I'm getting an instrument height of 5.16, 5.16. All right, now I'm gonna power on the receiver, and I'm gonna power on the data collector. First thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is communicate all of my equipment, so I'm gonna come down to connect. I'm gonna make sure that my optical robotics is selected and I'm gonna click connect. Now that we're communicated, I'm gonna go over to setup and select backsite. I'll now site our backsite. And I'll click measure. And we're gonna start by identifying our occupation point, which we are occupying point number 10. Our instrument height, we measured it is 5.16. The backsight point is going to be point number one, and the height of the rod is going to be 
6.56. This is written on the side of the rod. And if we take a look at our errors, you can see we have 100th in the northing, right on in the easting, and only 3 hundredths in the elevation. I'm pretty happy with this, and I'm going to accept these conditions for our setup. All right, since I've already got point number one thanks to the back sight, I'm gonna start with point number two. I'll set my rod right over the point, make sure I'm plumb, and take an observation. All right, looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and store. Next, we're gonna do point number three, point number four, point number five, point number six. This will be point number seven, point number eight, and finally, point number nine. All right, the last thing I'm gonna do is turn an angle to the back sight and ensure that the baseline azimuth is still set to zero degrees. All right, just found the back sight. And there we go, zero degrees, which means that our baseline azimuth is still set to the back sight and our data should be good. All right, now that we've finished surveying using the total station, it's time to test out the LiDAR sensor using the RTK antenna. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is download the Pix4D Catch app. This is the app that you're gonna to wanna to use that is compatible with the Viadoc. Once you've installed it, you're gonna see a live view of your camera, and there's going to be a little GPS signal in the top left-hand corner. If you tap on that, you're gonna see that there are two types of GPS. There's the integrated GPS sensor, which is the GPS in your phone, and then there is the Viadoc RTK via Bluetooth. So obviously we're gonna to wanna to set the Viadoc up. I'm gonna tap on that. And then a menu will pop up with your information. You're gonna to wanna to input all of the NTRIP information. This is gonna connect you to your local CORS network. So because I'm in Ohio, I'm going to be connected to the Ohio Department of Transportation's VRS CORS network. I put in my IP address, my port number, my username and password. Then I selected the mount point that I want to access. And then finally selecting the entry coordinate system. This is the CORS Network's coordinate system at which they're broadcasting their position. Once you're satisfied, you'll hit save. You'll be then given your status as well as your DOP number. And there we go, now we're RTK fixed, which means we're getting real-time corrections on the position of our iPhone. And with that, we're now ready to survey the sidewalk using the iPhone's LiDAR sensor with the Vidoc RTK. If you guys are enjoying this video and you're excited to see the data set that comes out of it, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and also follow me on Instagram if you wanna see more of my professional life doing surveying and aerial mapping. All right, and now it's time to start recording data. And good. We'll save this project. All right, and I'm loading up the project and here it is. We can see from the bottom to the top of the sidewalk, all of these little blue squares are the location at which my phone was at. Very cool. I can go ahead and create a tin really fast. And there we go, the tin is created. Oh wow, this looks very realistic now. And it's a reconstruction of the sidewalk. Very cool. So now I have the ability to view it on my phone. And it's as simple as that, using the iPhone's LiDAR sensor with the Viadoc RTK antenna. Now let's head into the office and analyze this data. Hello, now it's time to start processing the data. I've got right here my iPhone with the Viadoc RTK antenna, and I've loaded the Pix4D Catch app. Just to the left of the Capturing Data button, you're gonna see a little folder. If you tap on that, you can load up all the projects that you've worked on. Here's our project, we looked at this earlier. Up at the top, you're gonna see there's the 3D view. There's also the images, and this right here are all the raw images that Pix4D captured. The main purpose of these images is to colorize the LiDAR point cloud and to allow you to be able to differentiate different features based off of their RGB values. However, these images do have RTK positioning, so you could do photogrammetric image processing on them as well. Now up at the top, you're gonna see the word upload, and what we can do is upload this data set from the Pix4D Catch app into Pix4D Cloud. That way we can access the data on our computer. So I'm gonna tap on upload, 
And now we have a few things that we can look at. Um, we have a bunch of outputs that we can produce. We could create a uh, DSM, which will allow us to do volumetric measurements or just have a 3D perception map. You also have the 2D map, which will let you develop an orthomosaic image. This is basically a really high resolution aerial of your project. You can even do classical image processing. This is uh, running all the images and doing that photogrammetric image processing that I was telling you about. I don't really need to do this for this project since we're just analyzing the accuracy of the viaduct. So I'm gonna turn these off, but you definitely could benefit from those outputs. The most important thing is for you to select your output coordinate system. For me, we did the scan in Ohio, so this is going to be NAD83, Ohio South. Ohio uses the US survey foot, so I've indicated that as well. The vertical datum is NAVD88, and again, US survey feet. And when we're collecting the data, it's going to be in ellipsoid height. We want to have the geoid height, so we need to introduce the geoid correction. So we're going to be using the geoid 18 correction. I'm gonna hit done, and I'm gonna select upload. And now it's going to upload my project to the cloud. Now I'm going to turn on my computer and load up this project in Pix4D Cloud. Inside of Pix4D Cloud, you're going to see your projects that you've processed. And right here I have my project that I did. So I'm going to go ahead and open the project. And this right here is the point cloud that came out of the iPhone. And it's going to have those corrections from the Viadoc. This right here was the top where we had our back site when we did the total station. So right up here is the top of the hill and we can go all the way down the sidewalk to the bottom of the hill. So very cool. Now we're gonna to wanna to select all of these points and I'm going to utilize the images that were taken with the phone so that we can precisely pick the uh, PK nails that are in the ground and ensure that we have the same exact locations as the ones that we took with the total station. I'll come up here to the top. I'm gonna to use the inspect tool to inspect the area. All right, and we're very close to that nail. I'm gonna to try to get a little bit closer. I think we're getting there. All right, that's almost there. Maybe one more click. Maybe this one. Yeah, that's the one right there. Now I'm going to use the point tool to create a point in that location. And now we have coordinates for that point. We're going to continue to repeat the process for all nine of the points that we shot on the sidewalk. Now we've annotated and marked out all nine locations for where we took shots with our total station. All right, now I want to export my data into Excel so that I can do a comparison with the coordinates that I got from the total station. If you come over to annotations and select this little cloud, it'll export your data in WGS84. Now, since I'm using state plane coordinates, I'm going to manually copy and paste all the coordinates. Maybe in a future update, PIX40 will include the state plane coordinates, but for now, I'm just going to select the first point, copy my X coordinate, which is the easting, and I'm going to paste it here. The Y coordinate, which is the northern coordinate, and the elevation. Okay, and I've added all of the coordinates for all of the points that we've taken from the iPhone scan with the Viadox RTK corrections. Now let's import the total station coordinates and compare the results. This right here is the text file that came out of the total station. I'm just going to copy and paste the coordinates. All right, I've organized this a little bit and in this column, this will be our delta Y our delta x and our delta z. A simple equation of equals the northing of the iPhone minus the northing of the total station. Okay, and I'm going to drag this over and drag it down. All right, let's analyze this data. In point number one, we were off one tenth in the northing, one hundredth in the easting, and eight hundredths in the elevation. I'm actually pretty impressed. This is our starting point, um, so that's actually pretty good. Point number two, seven hundredths in the northing, five hundredths in the easting, and six hundredths in elevation. Three, four hundredths in northing, one tenth in the easting, and one hundredth in elevation. Are you kidding me? That's insane. Four, we have five hundredths in northing, a tenth in the easting, right on in elevation. Oh, man, that's awesome. It seems that we have a pretty similar pattern here. We're 100th off in the northing, 
five, six hundredths in easting, seven hundredths in elevation, one tenth in northing, five hundredths in easting, right on in the elevation, right on in northing, four hundredths in easting, two hundredths in elevation, a tenth, a tenth, four hundredths, right on, a tenth, and about a hundredth. And for all my metric users out there, I've converted the differences over to centimeters so you guys can better understand the differences between the total station and the iPhone with the Vidoc RTK. So this Vidoc RTK antenna is providing us with one tenth of accuracy in the horizontal and about five hundredths in the vertical. That has to do with the LiDAR sensor being as good as it is, and the Viaduct is providing RTK corrections, and they are being implemented correctly into the data sets. Make sure you guys check out the link in the description to pick up one of these Pix4D Viaduct RTK antennas for the iPhone 12 Pro, 13 Pro, and your iPad Pros. Make sure you like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, and I will see you guys next time.